nature. You've spared the precious nurse crane, but not your own Mary. What 
to bring this conversation to an end, forever. You know I will not play this game. Calm now, Doctor. Like a rabid dog. Or think you're performing an autopsy. Don't be ridiculous. I'll kill them all. The kind Dr. Swansea. The sweet little lass with hair of red. I am the Harbinger, bringing your punishment. Mary... Don't you see? This is not me. Flesh that never ages. All nightmare, no dream. Bring it to a close. Let me sleep. At last, I can forgive you. shed one last red tear for my fallen sister. I realize the entire world now revolves around this singular word. The epidemic that has stricken London is not the Spanish flu. It is transmitted through the blood via violent biting, turning survivors into frenzied immortals. I am Dr. Jonathan Reed. I am a vampire. Born anew into an age of death and pestilence, while plotting factions close in around me, I am sworn to find the source of this epidemic. I am convinced greater perils are still to come. 
I know the answers I seek are hiding in our blood. Good evening, Mr. Elwood. Evening, Dr. Reed. Soldier, do you need assistance? Not really. I think you caught something in this bloody hospital. I swear I'm dead. Yeah, smiling inside, Dr. Reed. As long as you remain here, I will make sure you don't have to worry about your health. Don't think you can do much about it. Damage is done.
Goodbye for now, Mr. Elwood. I'm quite busy right now, Dr. Reed. Do you need my assistance? Don't be ridiculous. I'm capable of dealing with this myself. I've just not taken the time to do so. Then you are lucky that I have taken the time to do so. Consider it a gesture of solidarity between professionals. I wish this hospital could have received as much attention from you, Dr. Reed. We do not see you in surgery very often. Thank you for your time. We'll talk later. Good evening, Milton. Good evening, Doctor. Still trying to save lives. Do you need any medical help, Milton? I'm afraid I do. Like everyone in this hospital. It's a sad state of affairs when even the hospital workers are worried about disease. Our job brings us into contact with all kinds of infections, Milton. There's no shame in being ill while you're in a hospital. That's easy for you to say, Doctor. I get the feeling you don't fall sick often. But thanks, anyway. Goodbye, Milton. Good evening, Mr. Fiddick. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Any news about my operation? Is there anything else that's bothering you? Can I help in any way? Really? Why has no one else asked me that since I got here? I thought I was in a hospital. Unfortunately, you are not the only person who needs help. And complaining about it won't do you any good. Well, perhaps you're right, Dr. Reed. I'm sure if me missus was still alive, she wouldn't be happy with me going on like this. Goodbye for now, Mr. Fiddick. I'll see you later. Good evening, Doctor. How is my son doing? Do you require medical attention as well, Mrs. Goswick? Do you know you're the only one who's asked me this? No. I don't feel well, actually. Despite what you think about this place, I can tell you with absolute certainty, taking this will help you recover. Well, at least your reputation seems well deserved. Unfortunately, I can't say the same for this hospital. Goodbye, Mrs. Goswick. I'm all right. Don't waste your time with me. I will not let you down, my boy. Good evening, Dr. Reed. Such a pleasure to see you again. Do you need medical attention? Well, the proximity of the dead is not the most healthy company, even if the quiet can be appreciated. Don't take too many risks with your health, Mr. Chidana. None of us are immune to this disease, and that is a good thing. Death and disease is a constant reminder of our mortality. But you have my thanks, Dr. Reed. Goodbye, Mr. Chidan.
Good evening, Nurse Brannigan. Good evening, Doctor. Do you require medical assistance, Nurse? I will be fine. As soon as I can get some sleep. Nurse, you won't be able to help people if you're sick. Take this, and do try to get some rest. I'll try, Dr. Reed. Thank you. Goodbye, nurse. Call me if you need assistance. Perhaps I should have considered the offer from that Cadogan fellow. It's safer here than anywhere else in the East End. When I get back... I'll have a word with Tom. He's really pissed This me off. city is more peaceful without the bombs, but no less dangerous. you are. This is no time for petty quarrels, my champion. Can you not hear? The famished queen has awoken. I am not your champion. But of course you are, son. As surely as you are the blood of my blood. I had to kill Mary. I have known your pain, child. Do not succumb to me. Silence! I dismiss you, now! The land calls for a champion. All and everyone needs you. Silence! I'm tired of all these puppet shows. Show them war! Whatever this poor woman did, nobody deserves this kind of punishment.
This is my territory! So this is where she lives. What a splendid house. Dr. Reed, welcome. How are you? As good as one can be, considering the circumstances. Yes. Death and affliction seem prevailing themes of late. Please, come in. We have much to discuss. I hope I haven't disturbed you. Not at all. Actually, I was counting on you visiting me tonight. How strange, this painting. Beautiful, melancholic, yet with a haunting dignity. Indeed. A long time ago, a friend asked me to paint this for him. But I kept it in the end. I did not know you were a painter, my lady. There are many things you do not know about me, young Ekon. Please, call me Jonathan. Please excuse my behavior, Jonathan. I tend to tease my friends when uneasy. What is bothering you, my lady? Your letter was quite alarming. We will talk about this in a few minutes. For now, I would like you to tell me about yourself. How have you been since we last met, my friend? My sister Mary. She was made a vampire in the same way I was. She was the one killing all those people everywhere I went. Vengeance is a powerful force for those betrayed. Made vampire through careless error. Victims by surprise. In the end, she implored me to put an end to her misery. But still, I felt I had taken her life twice. I am so sorry for my accidental cruelty. Had I known your dear Mary was still alive, I would never have sent you to pray for her soul in that church. There is no need to apologize, my lady. Your words have been most helpful in these difficult times. Thank you, my friend. If only we could have guided your poor sister through her terrible nightmare. I swear I did not intend that. If only I had known then how vampires are created. That is the scientist speaking. 
In truth, most of us do not know how it really works. Personally, I make sure my prey will not return to haunt me. What do you mean? I am merciless, Jonathan. I only feed on the dying, and I make sure they are dead before leaving their remains. I came to the conclusion that my maker, whoever he might be, must be a powerful vampire. Certainly extremely old. How have you reached this conclusion? I felt this power radiating like an aura every time he appeared. Most ancestral vampires of England were killed by the guard of Prewen half a century ago. I wonder who your maker could be. You have no idea who he could be? Some of the Ancient Ones fled England. Some may still be in hiding. All I know is you, my friend, are a pawn in some secret and obscure game of chess. He is the only immortal I've seen appear in an ethereal form. His voice, his words seemed ancient. It was disturbing. I am afraid you are right. The simple fact that your blood made Mary such a strong Ekon proves that you must be of ancient lineage. I think I should ask the questions, your ladyship. After all, it was you who invited me to settle this most urgent of matters. Fair enough, Jonathan. The situation is critical. We do not have the luxury for etiquette. Please do not misunderstand me. I would be delighted to discuss mundane matters and idle trivialities. If we survive the dark nights to come, we shall have all the time in the world to speak, you and I. For now, please follow me, Jonathan. I must say, your house is exquisite. One of the advantages of living forever is having the time to be selective with one's furnishings. I took the liberty of having tea served. You can still drink tea. Can't keep it down. But I do so enjoy the aroma. Let us toast to make-believe. And of course, to your health, Jonathan. And to yours, my lady. Please, call me Elizabeth. So, my lady, why truly did you invite me here? I've been asked to deliver an official invitation to meet the Ascalon Club. Who are they? Really? They are the embodiment of vampire law in Britain. Some say they influence the destiny of the Empire. Some believe they merely protect it. How many are they? Only a small number of powerful and deceitful immortals. All of them entangled in a sticky web of shadow cabinets, influencing trade. Will they fight the guard of Prewen? I doubt it. Fergal was Lord Redgrave's executioner forever and a day. By defeating that beast, you deprived them of a powerful weapon. Why use you to contact me? Because they know we are close. The Ascalon Club has many spies. Their main occupation is gathering information and then deciding how to use it. Have they threatened you in any way? Not at all. Their message surprised me at first. But it is only logical, considering the critical situation in London. Why not ask for your help? since you are obviously a powerful and influential immortal yourself. You have to understand that I am invisible to the eyes of Ascalon, for I am a woman. That suits me well, as long as they leave me alone. Should I trust them? Of course not. Do not misunderstand me. They can be very useful, but I believe their long-term goals differ from yours. Why meet them, then? Because nothing truly important can be achieved in this city without their consent. They could be powerful allies in this current situation. Should I lie to them? We all lie, Jonathan. It falls to you to choose your behavior. 
The most important rule is to show them due respect. They have done nothing but impede my investigations since I became known to them. Why would they want to see me now? I guess they now see you as Ascalon material. They must have found out what happened to your sister. Proof of the potent blood flowing through your veins. I'm not sure I can accept their invitation. I have seen their handiwork. How Fergal the Beast imposed the club's law. You have no choice, Jonathan. Even I would not openly defy Lord Redgrave, the chairman of the Ascalon Club. What can you tell me about Lord Redgrave? Who is he? Lord Redgrave is the founder and chairman of the Ascalon Club. Most mortals know him as the Earl of Bristol. He is rich and extremely influential. Have you met him? Only on rare occasions, for he never goes outside the club. And women are not awarded membership, even immortals. How old is he? How long has he been a vampire? Lord Redgrave claims to be the progeny of William Marshall, the most valiant knight who ever lived. If that is true, he could be very old. The Ascalon Club may be the most influential secret society in England. Not all its members are immortals, but they are all very powerful. They are not all immortals? How is that? The club is mainly comprised of political figures who seek the safety and expansion of the Empire. The most loyal are awarded immortality. Any familiar or famous names? As the richest, most relentless British tycoon, Aloysius Dawson is considered ideal Ascalon material and has been watched for years. If you are convinced I must meet him, I will heed your advice. Thank you, Jonathan. I understand your reluctance to brush shoulders with London's vampire elite. But we have no choice. Is the situation that critical? Yes. The Guard of Prewen has called for a second great hunt of our kind, and they will stop at nothing to eliminate us. Will the Guard of Prewen and the Ascalon Club fight each other? I doubt it. If Prewen really launched a great hunt, I think most of the Ekons I know would flee the country to escape the bloodbath. I think I saw them kill an Ekon on the way to your house. They seem to have a list with names. To launch another great hunt, they must have collected intelligence on vampire identities and whereabouts. They are a resourceful lot. Should we fight back? I will not be hunted down like an animal again. I admire your courage, Jonathan. But the best way to fight them is to put an end to the epidemic. This is the only way to clear the air. What is a great hunt? The first great hunt was launched about 75 years ago. In just a few nights, the guard of Prewen located and destroyed most of the old British vampires. How did you survive the first hunt? I fled, Jonathan like most vampires who survived that slaughter. And I secretly came back when I was sure they had lost my trail. Why start a second one? Prewen has always seen us immortals as a threat to mankind. My guess is they suspect one or more of us is the cause of the epidemic. You should flee then. Leave London, the country even. I have seen the guard in action. They are merciless. Your concern warms my heart, Jonathan. But fear not. If the situation gets too dangerous, I shall retreat to my secret Scottish manor. I could hide you in my luggage, if you wish. Thank you for the offer. I shall keep it in mind, but I have much to do here. There is a question I must ask you. Could Lord Redgrave be my maker. I doubt it. If Lord Redgrave had made you his progeny, he would not have seemed so surprised when you demonstrated the strength of your lineage. 
What is the plan? The plan is we both try to save this city. You and I go to Ascalon, accept their proposition, and use their influence to promote your agenda. How can I save London? The epidemic is the priority. You must find its origin and put an end to it. This is the best way to solve the crisis. What will you do? I still have contacts and old friends in this town. I shall make some inquiries and attempt to learn more of the situation. We need clarity. Will I ever discover the identity of my maker? Maybe not, Jonathan. We know for sure you were made by a powerful vampire. But most of those fled England long ago. Please forgive my bluntness, but I have to ask. Was it you? Did you make me? Oh, Jonathan. I know you shall always have a gnawing doubt about who made you an immortal. But I swear, I had nothing to do with it. You have no idea at all? You seem to know so many things about the secrets of the vampire underworld. Even if I had my suspicions, I would not dare give you a name so soon. All I can say is this. I will make inquiries and keep you informed. One day soon, I will have to find the answer to this mystery. And I shall help you in your research, I promise. For now, you must go to the Ascalon Club and play their game. Will I see you again at the Pembroke Hospital? No. You will find me here if you need me. I shall conduct inquiries alone, and we can then share our discoveries. Will you not visit Pembroke again? No. I must remain discreet and avoid attracting attention to Pembroke Hospital for the time being. But how will you sustain yourself? I shall not, Jonathan. Fear not. I'm used to it. When will we meet again? As soon as you meet Lord Redgrave, I suppose. Fear not, my dear. I shall only be a heart's beat away. I want to thank you for all your support and your help, my lady. Could you do me a last great favor and call me Elizabeth? I should be honored, my lady. Then it is settled. Finally, some good news in these dark hours. Thank you. I appreciate the advice. I had best prepare myself to meet this Lord Redgrave now. How thrilling to meet the Earl of Bristol in the flesh, so to speak. Something tells me you're not very keen on the man. Don't get me wrong. The gentlemen of the Ascalon Club are honorable, but their attitude and opinions are somewhat antiquated. <laughs> I see. As long as they deny access to female applicants, I will leave them to their antediluvian considerations as to the natural order of things. Jonathan, promise me you'll be careful. Of course. But why the fear in your voice? Look at me, Jonathan. I am. I mean, really look at me, young Ekon. We may be deceptive by nature. But this heart of mine has always told the truth. Oh. Elizabeth. Go, my friend. But come back to me soon.
So, time to visit the Ascalon Club. It's locked.
it's locked. Hello again, Jonathan. To what do I owe the pleasure of your visit? Sorry to disturb you again, but could you spare me a few minutes? Of course, my dear. Always a pleasure to speak with you. Concerning your investigation... Yes? Are you truly seeking to identify my maker? I cannot promise you anything, but yes. I am conducting some research of my own. Do you think we shall ever see better days? Or at least, better nights? I know not, Jonathan. I have seen some horrid days in my long lifetime. Experience has taught me that one cannot outrun the fates. Will you tell me your story one day, Lady Asprey? One of them, perhaps. I have had so many lives, Jonathan. Eternity may not be enough to relate them all. When all of this is over, the war and the epidemic, we could leave the city for a while. Travel around Europe, you and I. Traveling is always so complicated for us poor creatures of the night. But yes, I would be glad to travel the world with you, my dear. Do you know if the epidemic has affected many people in the West End? I confess I've been more concerned by events in the East End. The wealthy have more efficient ways of dealing with infection. But this is no common epidemic. That is true. I must tell my daughter to stay at home for a few days. But the girl is stubborn and fiercely independent. Much like her mother. Goodbye, Elizabeth.
this anyway. It will make McCullum happy. That was the vampire I saw earlier. This war takes no prisoners. West End. Never have I felt so sad to be back home. tonight. How is your sweet boy? Mother, good evening. Jonathan, is it you? Where have you been, my prodigal son? I'm right here, mother. I'm finally home. Yes, but this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and now found. But where is your sister? Where is Mary? Mary? She... She is gone, Mother. I know she's gone. The question is, when will she return as you have? I miss my grandson so much. It's been days since their last visit. Mother, do you know what's been going on in this area? Not really. I don't go out much due to the epidemic, and when I do, I tend to get lost. What do you mean, you get lost? I hope you don't go outside alone. Of course not. When I go out, your father always comes with me, but he leaves me there sometimes, and I have trouble finding the way back. Mother. Not really. What do you mean, you get lost? Of course not. When I go out... Have you returned to Whitechapel Cemetery since Mary's funeral? I never want to go back to that awful place. Wait, I think I went back once. And you were there alone. If that kind policeman had not called Avery from the station, I don't know what would have happened. Have you returned? I never want to go It was a nightmare, yes. Mary was... Do you need anything, Mother? Can I help you? I just want you to stay with me, Jonathan. Your room is ready. I asked Avery to make your bed. I'll stay as long as I can, I promise. Do you need anything else? Just one thing. 
Stop staring at me like that. As much as I love you, it breaks my heart to look at those empty and dead eyes. Are you working on a new painting? Not recently. I have trouble focusing on my subject and my mind quickly drifts. It's the same thing when I try to write poetry. I recently met a talented painter with an excellent technique. I wish you two could meet. I'm sure you'd like her. I'd be glad to meet her. What is her name? Is she famous? Is she dead too? She's not famous, and her name is of no importance. And yes, she is also dead. The important thing is, I hope you two get along. If she ever fancies meeting your mother, I'd be glad to welcome her into my home. Have you I never want to go back to that It was just a bad dream. A nightmare, yes. Why do you say Mary is visiting you? You know that's impossible. Why should it be? Are you not standing in front of me right now? Why should it be any different with your sister? But Mary really is dead, Mother. Yes. And are you not dead too? Isn't your father dead? And my grandson and my son-in-law, you're all gone. But you all still visit me from time to time. But I'm not dead, Mother. I'm really here, talking to you, trying not to cry. Oh, it breaks my heart to have to tell you this. But of course you're dead, my darling boy. Just look at you, as pale as my Mary. Goodbye, Mother. Try to rest now. Goodbye, son. Please come back soon. Your father and I have spoken about your fiance, Mary. We believe he'll be an honorable husband for you. We'll set a date for the marriage then. That way, I'm sure one of my children will give me grandchildren. I understand your thirst for knowledge, Jonathan. And your father and I are proud of it. But you are not that young anymore, my son. When will I meet your soulmate? You can ascribe my romantic tendencies to my French origins if you want, Aubrey. But I'll never cease to believe in a match made in heaven, my beloved. I really wish you could meet her mother. You would love her. Hello again, Mother. Jonathan, back already? Good, good. I was just about to go outside to find you. You shouldn't stay away for so long. Do you really see Mary and Father? Do you also see me as one of the dead? Yes. For many years, it was just a game. Since your father left us without a word, I took to the habit of speaking to him. Yes, I remember. I sometimes spied on you and listened to you talking with father in the garden. It made me so angry then. But it was just a game, wasn't it? Yes, it was. 
But since then, my poor dead Mary visited me in my room. She led me to her grave, and there you were. I now know the dead can haunt us. I'm so sorry. You did not deserve to endure this. Mary... Dead. Now she is silent, and it makes me so sad. Should I leave you alone? Just ask, and I swear you'll never hear from me again. Oh, no, Johnny. You're always welcome in this house. I will all be together again, just as Mary promised us. Goodbye, Mother. Try to rest now. Goodbye, son. Please come back soon. Mary? Oh, my dear daughter, how are you tonight? How is your sweet boy? I remember Sunday walks in the... Good evening, Avery. Mr. Jonathan? I can't believe my own eyes. Oh, it's a miracle. We all thought you were... Oh, sir, your poor sister. What a tragedy. I know, Avery. I know about my sister's murder. Miss Reed expected you to return to assist with the funeral, right up until the last minute. Where have you been, Mr. Jonathan? We needed you here. How is my mother? Not well, I'm afraid, sir. Miss Reed is very fragile since the police brought her back home. The police? What happened? Miss Reed was found walking in the streets. She kept saying she had spoken with her son and daughter. She's resting now. Has she received appropriate medical care? I'm taking care of Miss Reed myself. Hospitals are so overwhelmed by the epidemic that they can only accept patients infected by influenza. Perhaps we could arrange a short trip. Somewhere sunny, like France. She has always been very fond of France. 
I think leaving London could do her good. I'm afraid Miss Reed is too frail for the moment. Recently, she started going out at night without remembering it. I have to watch her carefully. What is the situation in this part of town? For a time, the West End seems spared by the epidemic. But the situation is getting much worse. Have you no relatives anywhere? I'll understand if you want to take a few days to see family. Your father managed to guarantee my earnings as long as I take care of this house, sir. My sisters are dead, and I've never met my nephews. I'll stay, sir. I'm sorry I could not be here for Mary's funeral. Your mother was strong, sir. But your support would have been appreciated. Apart from the priest and I, no one else attended your sister's funeral. To be present at the funeral with you both was my dearest wish, Avery. But I'm sorry, I simply could not attend. I would not dare to question your absence, Mr. Jonathan. All I can say is that we missed you a great deal during these difficult days. My mother speaks to the dead members of this family. Yes. I sometimes hear her speaking to you, Miss Mary, and her baby. Sometimes your father, too. So she thinks I'm also dead. And what about you? I believe she only sees her relatives as the dead she speaks to, Mr. Jonathan. It breaks my heart to see Miss Reed like that. She may get better. It's only a hypothesis, but I know my mother is strong. Whatever illusions have clouded her mind, they will fade in time. Yes. With time, Miss Reed will recover from this cursed year. I know that your return can only be beneficial to that process. Tell me the truth, Avery. Do you feel forced to stay here? Would you leave this house without the arrangement made by my father? No, sir. I have nowhere else to go. And I promised your father I'd take care of his family as long as I live. This house is dead, Avery. There is a curse on this family. You really should consider leaving. If only you could have been here sooner or more often. Maybe this house would not be that empty. But you're here now, sir. So my task is not over. You have served this family extremely well, Avery. Your support during these terrible times is much appreciated. Then I will stay. All I ask is that you take care of my own funeral if I die before the end of the epidemic. No mass grave, please, sir. You really think I don't take enough care of my mother, Avery? Yes, I do, Mr. Jonathan. You clearly have something more to say. Speak your mind, Avery. I know you work hard to help the sick, but what will you do once the epidemic is over? My home is here, and I have nowhere else to go. But this house will need some improvements if I move here. Some radical changes. That's good news. Whatever changes you have in mind, I'm sure we will find an arrangement that suits your mother also. I found an old letter written by my father and addressed to me. Do you know anything about it, Avery? Your father wanted me to give you this letter for your 35th birthday, but you left for the war and the letter remained in his office. Until tonight. I realize now you knew my father better than I did. Do you know why he left, Avery? Did he ever speak to you about his departure? No, sir. Mr. Reed was not exactly forthcoming. Perhaps this letter will give you the information you require. Good. 
Goodbye, Avery. Please watch over my mother until I return. Of course, Mr. Jonathan. But please return as soon as possible. The Ascalon Club, the heart of British vampire society. Not quite as subtle as I expected. It's locked, all right. Good evening, sir. Please forgive me for disturbing you. I'm a doctor. I never judge a man by his title, but by his attitude. And you are not disturbing me at all. I am Calhoun Russell, and I welcome you. Well, I must admit, it's good to receive a warm welcome for once. I'm Dr... I'm Jonathan Reed. Welcome, Dr. Reed. Welcome to my humble shop. How is the situation in this part of town? Life is good and peaceful. We're lucky to live in such an era of progress and wonders. Are you not concerned about the epidemic? Oh, I'm sure the authorities would take the appropriate measure if the danger were that high. I'm afraid the newspapers are seriously underestimating the situation. Things are critical, believe me. Well, that's news then. But I can't believe that things are that bad. Are you sure you're not exaggerating a bit? For the thrill of it? Is it not a little too late to be trading? On the contrary, it is the perfect hour. Believe me, my friend, it is always at night that you meet the most fascinating characters. So you prefer to work at night? Oh, I also enjoy a sunny day like everybody else. But the night always has a certain je ne sais quoi of its own. But what about the epidemic? The bombs and raids? And all the random violence. Please, sir, this is London, England. We will prevail. And if a bomb must fall on my shop, then I'll be there to hear it falling. What can you tell me about this place? I recently found the best steak and kidney pie in the city. I'd be glad to share the address if you want. Finding a good restaurant? Is that really all that interests you? Oh, I have many passions, but nothing brings me ecstasy like subtle and exquisite flavors from my teeth to my belly. I must confess, I have quite specific tastes when it comes to nutrition. Really? Well, I'm always happy to try new exotic meals. If you ever find an intriguing table, please share the address. Do you have any family nearby? Not since my parents died. I'm London's lone gourmet. Really? But you seem to be such a pleasant and sociable fellow. I'm afraid the real hedonist has to be sometimes. I discovered ecstasy as a solitary pleasure, but it does not mean it can't ever be shared. London's lone gourmet. What a strange title. I used that name in my early years when I was a food critic, and I kept I may have a look at your goods, Mr. Russell.
equality between men and women. Good evening, miss. Oh my god, no. Please, Mr. Vampire, don't kill me. Please, no. I'm too young to die. I still have so much to offer this world. Wait, no. Why do you think I would... What? Don't worry, Dr. Reed. I know you wouldn't harm me. Mother told me you were in this part of town and might drop by. Your mother? My name is Charlotte, sir. Charlotte Ashbury. My mother taught me long ago how to recognize the signs that betray a vampire. I understand she also taught you how to tease and gently mock innocent young Ekons. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Charlotte. What do you think about this part of town? I was raised here, and I suppose it feels like home. You grew up in this part of town too, did you not? Yes, I was born a few streets away. A small world, is it not? Did you ever imagine that my mother was your neighbor all that time? That you could have met her in a dark alley at night? You won't trick me twice, young lady. We both know Lady Ashbury never hunts or attacks prey at random. Come on, Doctor. Don't tell me you never thought about that possibility. Her fangs on your neck. Oh, are you blushing, Dr. Reed? Is there something that's bothering you? Too much selfishness and individualism for my taste. Even when there was no epidemic. Even if that's partly true, may I remind you that many charitable institutions are financed by the selfish and filthy rich. I suppose you're right. But society must reform and renew itself, or we are all done for. Tell me about your adoption. What do you want to know? Who are your real parents? Elizabeth Ashbury is my real mother. She raised me and has taken care of me all my life. I have no idea who my progenitors are or were. Do you live with her? I still spend a lot of time in my mother's mansion. But I have my own house now. I have a life to live, you see. And one day, I'll have my death to face. How did you meet Lady Ashbury? First, I was an orphan in the institution for girls she manages in the West End. When I was ten, she adopted me. And I have lived with her ever since. Did you know she was a vampire when she picked you? The correct word is Ekon, Doctor. And no, I had no idea why my mother only showed up at night. She told me everything when I turned 16. Though I suspected the truth for a long time before that. What are you doing out here? You mean, what do I do outside at night since I am a woman? Let me ask you a question, sir. Would you ask the same question of a man? Actually, yes. I ask the same question to everyone who dares to go outside at night, considering the risks. Well, if you must know, I campaign for the right to vote for all women. Why should I wait to the age of 30 years when men can vote at 21? Are you a suffragette, then? Oh, you really are Elizabeth's girl. Without a doubt. All adult women have the right to vote in the US, in New Zealand, and in Australia. But women here can't vote unless they are property owners. No need to convince me, Miss Charlotte. I have shared your opinion for a long time. Even before I met Emmeline Pankhurst. Really? Oh. Now I see why my mother appreciates you so much. Too bad there aren't more men like you in the vicinity. How are the locals reacting to your claims? People here can't wait for a wall to be built to isolate the West End from the rest of town. That's how progressive they are. If this happens, Emily and I will blow it up. Explosives are very dangerous, young lady. And who is this Emily? She is my best friend, and a suffragette too. She was supposed to campaign with me tonight, but hasn't turned up. Have you any reason to be worried about her? Recently, Emily started to believe in... Well, she got interested in vampires. I'm afraid she might be in trouble. Let me guess. You spoke to her about us, didn't you? Despite your mother's warning, I think I should try to find your friend. Oh, that would be top-notch. I can tell you where she might have gone. You have my thanks, Dr. Reed. And please, don't tell my mother.
What exactly has your mother told you about me? Your name and profession, obviously, and the mystery about your maker. I'm sorry to hear about what happened to your sister, sir. Mother says it was not your fault. Does it not scare you to know what I am? What your mother is? Why should it? My mother is the most compassionate woman. Must I be wary of her, Dr. Reed? Or you? Of course not. You have nothing to fear from me, or your mother. Good to know. And don't worry, my mother told me everything I need to know about vampire tricks, their nature as well as features. Your mother is not like any other vampire I've met. I believe she thinks the same about you, Dr. Reed. Why do you still hope to become a vampire in spite of your mother's refusal? It's the immortal aspect of vampires that interests me. The world won't improve unless women take charge. I'm convinced of that. You're obviously a clever woman with a good education and a brilliant future. But have you thought about the price you'd have to pay? The loneliness? The necessary masquerade? Is it not true of every high position? To change this world and make it a better place, one needs time on one's side. Do you know why Lady Asprey chose you to become her daughter? No, I don't. Each time I ask her that question, she smiles and says it's precisely because I dare to ask such questions. Do you ever regret that she chose you? Of course not. Though I often wonder if she adopted others before me. If so, where are they buried? How was it for them to pass through life with a never-aging mother? Your mother has refused to turn you into a vampire. Tell me more about it. Each time we argue, mother expresses the same fear. She wants me to remain alive and full of joy, rather than become melancholy and immortal. She claims you can't have one without the other. It's pure selfishness. It's your mother's choice. As daughters and sons, we have to accept the decisions our parents make for us despite our own wishes. I love my mother, and have accepted everything from her. Even that she named me Charlotte, when it was not my original name. Does it bother you? No. Whoever I was when I was born, I am now Charlotte Ashbury. It hurts as much as it makes me proud, to know that's the name my mother will read on my tombstone. Your mother has walked this earth for much longer than you or I. She is wise, and we should not ignore her advice when we disagree with it. But why shouldn't I be allowed to forge my own experience? There can't be only one righteous way to deal with eternity. Tell me, Charlotte, how do you plan to achieve eternal life? since you've obviously given it a lot of thought. I won't give up. You have no idea how determined I am, sir. I may contract a deadly disease. I may throw myself under a carriage just to be saved by her sweet kiss. That's a disturbing answer, young lady. And the worst part of it is, I know you speak the truth. There are less dangerous ways, Doctor. Instead of throwing myself under a horse like Emily Davison, I could just throw myself into your arms. Stop playing this game at once, Charlotte. This is unworthy of you, of your mother and of myself. I'm sorry, Dr. Reed. Please forgive me. That was stupid. Goodbye, Charlotte. Give my best regards to your mother when you see her. She's been quite busy these last few nights. I suspect you may see her before me.
Good evening, sir. May I have your attention, please? Come on, Johnny. Don't you recognize your oldest friend? Clarence. Clarence Crossley. How are you? My God. So you survived the war, too. So sorry I didn't recognize you at first. I almost didn't recognize you, either. War does that to men, I heard. In my case, it was true, for I witnessed the horror that lies underneath. When did you escape the war and return to London? You know what's funny? I almost never think about the war. Not anymore. I'm involved in another kind of battle now. What is this new battle? Well, I saw terrible things during the war. Horrors I thought I'd forget. They're here too. They're everywhere. Vampires. I know what you mean. I haven't had much time to think about the war either since my return. Of course. With the epidemic, I bet you've been busy as well. Forgive me, Johnny. I, I didn't want to sound selfish. How is your wife, Venus? We've spent so much time away from each other, and so many things have happened. Is everything all right at home? Surely Venus was relieved to see you return from France in one piece. If you forgot what people are like in this part of town, Johnny. Venus fears for our family reputation, now her husband has become the village idiot. But you're alive. You returned in one piece, and you have a family. How many soldiers can say the same? Believe me, it's not quite that simple. Unlike you, I'm not the man I used to be. some rest, Clarence. You should try to sleep. Good evening, miss. Can I help you? I'm a doctor. Dr. Jonathan Reed. I am... 
him Karina Billow. I don't need any doctor. The rats. Where are the rats? Miss, you don't seem well at all. Are you afraid of rats? Has one bitten you? No. It's me who bites them. Tasty, juicy, disgusting rats. I can't stop eating them. Help me, please. Help me to disobey the voice. What happened to you? The rats. The answer hides in their little crunchy bones. Their juicy, tiny brains. Miss Billow, please, try to concentrate. Why do you worry about rats so much? The voice in my head. He forces me to do so. Drink their blood, he said. Eat their flesh. Tell me about the voice in your head. Who is it? Can you describe it? Is it someone you know? Someone you met? Keep your mouth shut, he said. Don't ever speak about me or I'll abandon you. Help me, please, Doctor. Do you feel compelled to obey that voice, Miss Billow? Even if you're loath to submit to it? Yes. Please. Tell me about yourself, Miss Billow. What do you do for a living? Oh, I'm hungry. Need to eat. Have you got something for me? Blood, perhaps? Can you give me blood, Dr. Reed? Don't you remember who you are, Miss? What you did for work? I was... strong. Proud. I campaigned for good causes. But that was before... before... It does not matter anymore. I'm so hungry. What is the local news here about, Miss Billow? Shadows. Shadows hunting shadows. Whispers in the dark. Pestilence. Suffering. Death. I must go now. Goodbye, Miss Billow. I cannot enter.
believe I'm doing this. This is despicable. Welcome back to my humble shelter, Dr. Reed. Are you here to subdue me again? No, Sean. I just came by to see how you are. I feel all right. Why do you ask? Are you still feeding on corpses? No. It's almost as though the blood you forced me to drink has provided me eternal satisfaction. How is the sanitary situation in this part of town? I think it's acceptable. Fewer cases of sickness recently. I thank the Lord for his mercy. How are things in your shelter? Between the mortals and the immortals, I mean. Even if we're all children of God, I've always maintained a strict frontier between the two communities. What if food became scarce? Wouldn't the immortals in your flock be tempted to feed on the living? Wouldn't you? The Skulls can feed on the dead, Doctor. And until Judgment Day, mortals will continue dying. What do you fear? A few years ago, a Skull decided to pay a nocturnal visit to my sleeping customers. He got caught licking their necks in the dark. Since then, I have added a lock to the door. Have you seen Harriet Jones since taking her to Old Bridget? No. She is with the sewer Skulls now. I don't go downstairs. What happened at the Pembroke? I guess we recognized each other. As Skulls, I mean. She had but one thought. To punish. To get revenge upon everything and everyone. I realized I had to bring her here quickly. But why did she fake her own death? There was so much blood in her room. She attacked patients, too. I just lost her for a minute that night. When I found her, she had caused mayhem across the hospital. I slapped some sense into her, and 
and we fled before getting caught. What happened then? We ran here through narrow streets and backyards. She kept saying that someone was talking to her in the dark, offering to avenge her. But I saw nobody. How did you meet old Bridget? When younger, I used to patrol the streets at night, searching for lost souls. This is how I met her. It took me two months just to get her name. Now we support each other. You really are a saint, Sean. Oh, no, sir, I'm not. But I know evil, and I believe goodwill and tenacity can make this world a better place. Had you already visited their hideout in the sewers? Just once, and very briefly. Most of them are very discreet, and they see me as an outsider, even if I protect them. Would you let me listen to your chest, Sean? No, Dr. Reed. You already forced me to drink your blood, and I thank you for that, for I feel better now. But it was quite an unpleasant experience. It would help me greatly if you would allow me to give you a physical examination. I said no. I'm no subject of medical examination, and I intend only to obey and to kneel before God. Farewell, Sean. Take good care of your flock. And of yourself. It's locked. Good evening, Mr. Throgmorton. Dr. Reed, can I be of any assistance? Have you noticed anything suspicious lately? Tell me, Ichabod, why do you consider yourself the protector of Sean Hampton Shelter? He is a truly inspiring example. Dedicated, pious. His shelter is open to all, whoever they are. Most admirable. Have you heard any rumors regarding Sean Hampton's shelter? The sad saint will always be a target for vampires, but I'm keeping an eye out. Are you- It seems the guard of Prewen has declared war on vampires. I'm not sure if that's a good thing, though. Really? I thought you'd be thrilled by this news. The guard can be reckless. They rush into a fight without thinking. The citizens of London should not be the collateral victims. Goodbye, and good hunting, Mr. Throckmorton. Good evening, young man. There's no need to call me that, Dr. Reed. Have you heard anything recently concerning Sean Hampton's shelter? He keeps investing time helping the poor and sick. Good for him. And for them. Show me what you have to offer then, Mr. Nightingale.
Good evening, young. There's no. Goodbye. Good evening, sir. I'm glad to see you safe. I am not safe. I should never have come back here. My life is in danger. I know it. You're much safer here than in that contaminated area. Bullets kill people quicker than diseases and epidemics, Dr. Reed. What can you tell me about this district? The East End Docks only knows one rule. Dog eat dog, and blood calls for blood. The gang will have their revenge on me one way or another. What can you tell me about the locals? Most people would say that Sean Hampton and Tom Watts are good men who try to sort things out. But for me, the real boss around there was my best friend, Jack Gillingham. Jack Gillingham, you say? Everyone ran there knew Jack. He was a rock. A mountain, even. He feared nothing. Your friend Jack has something to do with you fleeing to the contaminated area where I found you. I want to know more. Jack is dead. That's all you need to know. Dead because of me. So much violence. So much sorrow. All of that because I refuse to be insulted again. No man can predict the exact outcome of his actions. It's the curse we have to live with. We can only gamble and do what we think is best. Perhaps you're right. The district was doomed before I was born. But I cannot stop myself thinking that Jack died for me. Why do you say that? After I killed that gang member, the wet boot boy suspected Jack. And being loyal and all, he did not refute the accusation. You are not going to spend the rest of your life hiding, Rodney. What are you planning to do? Honestly, I have no idea. How am I supposed to live while so many have suffered because of me? Only you can answer that question. But one thing is certain. Since you owe Jack your life, I think it's fair to live it in a way that would make him proud. That's the kind of thing Jack could have said, Dr. Reed. Thank you for that. I believe you're a good guy too. The death of your friend has affected you deeply, hasn't it? Jack Gillingham was the real deal. He believed we could change the world if we were united and focused enough. And he brought out the best in each of us. You're right. He died to save you. That alone gives me an idea of the kind of man he was. He was the bravest. And no one dares to say openly that he got killed by those bastards. Your friend's plan was audacious, if not reckless. No one stands up by themselves to a gang like the Wet Boot Boys. How dare you say that? You never met him. Goodbye, Mr. Grader. Take care.
Hello? Is anyone there? Jonathan, is that you? I did not know you were back in London. Oh, my dear Johnny, I'm so sorry for your loss. Mary was such a sweetheart. Thank you, Venus. May I come in? I was going to bed, actually. Forgive me. With the epidemic, I tend to forget people are supposed to sleep at night. I'll tell you what. Come back tomorrow for tea. I'll be glad to see you then. Good evening, old chap. Are you all right? I won't lie to you, Johnny. I'm not a well man. Do you need medical assistance, Clarence? It's a little late for visiting hours, don't you think? What can I say? I haven't lost my old habits. I hope we're talking about the same habits, old friend. You need some rest, Clarence. You should try to sleep. Do you know where you are standing right now? In front of the Ascalon Club, I presume. The Ascalon Club only summons or ostracizes. What is your business tonight? I received an invitation. I'm Dr. Jonathan Reed. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, then, Dr. Reed. Please proceed. Lord Redgrave is waiting on you upstairs. to the Ascalon Club, then, Dr. Reed. There has been quite a battle here. I'm sure the Ascalon Club has the money to replace the furniture. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, then, Dr. Reed.
Good evening. We repel the intruders for now. My good friends, if I may have your attention. Behold our visitor, the good Dr. Reed. Newborn of blood so pure and strong that even my friend Fergal Bancher was no match for him. Hear, hear, hear! Forward, young Ekon, for we have so much to discuss. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, Dr. Reed. I am Lord Redgrave, Earl of Bristol and Chairman of this exclusive association. Lord Redgrave. At last we meet. I have been eager to make your acquaintance. I have heard some astounding things about you. Please accept my condolences for your loss, Dr. Reed. Thank you, my lord. Lady Ashbury expressed your wish to meet me. Yes. The lady has always been a useful acquaintance, though not always reliable. Is she a good friend of yours? Yes, she is. I may even say I admire her probity and her kindness. She has helped me since I was reborn. Hmm. The centuries have taught me never to trust a woman completely, especially if she is immortal. Too prone to emotions, if you ask me. Too fickle when it comes to important decisions. My lord, do not expect me to speak ill of Lady Ashbury. Of course not, and I praise your loyalty. Would you offer the same fidelity to the Empire? What do you mean? I speak of the Skull Plague that threatens London and the country. You have been on the front line in the East End, but the time has come to open up a second front here. The epidemic has escaped the quarantine. You have new cases of the outbreak. We don't know for certain, but we cannot allow the disease to threaten the prominent heads of Great Britain. Why have you asked me here? Because the crisis is escalating. Our enemies, the Garda Prewen, have even launched an open hunt. The only way to calm things down is to put an end to the epidemic. You want me to find possible sources of the outbreak in the West End? Is that it? Ah, straight to the point, like all eager newborns. We shall have time to talk about all this, Dr. Reed, but first... I should like to get to know you better. Talk? Is that the only reason you asked me here? Well, no. I also wanted to meet the intriguing Ekon who made such a powerful progeny of his sister. You have not learned the name of your maker, am I correct? How dare you speak so flippantly of my family? Have no embarrassment, Dr. Reed. We all make mistakes. But whatever your lineage, you are definitely Ascalon material. What do you mean? I would like you to become a member of the Ascalon Club and to serve me as such. Before I accept, I have so many questions. Please ask. What does it mean? to be a member of the Ascalon Club. It means that you swear to protect the interests of the Crown, that you become a loyal servant of the British Empire. Do you have any official recognition from the government? A charter from His Majesty the King? No. Of course, the Ascalon Club publicly supports the Empire, but the true nature of its members remains a secret. Am I supposed to follow orders? As founder and chairman of the club, I alone am entitled to make demands of our members, and I do appreciate obedience. What is the Ascalon Club's express purpose? We follow the credo of William Marshall, the greatest knight who ever lived. As was he, we are sworn to protect the British Empire. What does Ascalon mean 
Ascalon was the lance wielded by St. George, glorious patron saint of England when he slew the dragon. And like that lance, we pierce the hearts of all our nation's enemies. William Marshall founded the Ascalon Club. Not exactly. William Marshall granted me immortality, and I founded the club a few years later. The good knight has been gone for so long. I killed Fergal, who claimed to be one of yours, sent to cleanse the East End of all Skulls. Will his death be an issue? Do not worry. My priorities have changed. Fergal was a zealous servant of mine, but like any servant, he had his limitations and is readily replaced if necessary. I agree to join the club. This is good news. Good news indeed in these crucial times. Let's inform the assembly formally and proceed with your initiation. My initiation? Fear not. Nothing fancy nor dangerous. It is just that we, the members of Ascalon, believe that tradition and custom are the backbone of this country. My fellow members, dear friends, please gather and welcome this Ekon as one of our own. Is he worthy? Is his blood pure? Well, speak, Dr. Reed, in front of the most sacred blood. The blood of our beloved William Marshall, speak now. Will you serve and protect the crown as he did? Yes, I will. Then, young Ekon, it is time to testify with your blood. It is time to sign the Book of Allegiance. I know it's awfully gothic and a tad pedantic, but England's traditions are the backbone of our nation. Welcome to the Ascalon. That went well, did it not? It is always useful to bolster the troops' morale, especially before a difficult battle. You have the makings of a general, my lord. I was, though very long ago. Well, not quite a general, but a proud defender of the crown. So why did you really want to meet me? Straight to the point again, young Ekon. All right, let's talk, you and I. Lance Sparrow? I'm listening, my lord. According to my spies, you have worked with Dr. Edgar Swansea on the epidemic, and your findings were quite alarming. Do you know Edgar Swansea? Not Pearl Bancher was my squire of sorts. Even before becoming that magnificent beast, he was a brute. He served me well for decades. No, I mean, what was he? He was clearly no ordinary vampire. No. He was a Volkod, all muscles and instinct. Quite the rare breed, ferociously territorial. Mortals often mistake them for werewolves. You do know I killed him? Yes. Will you bear ill will towards me for his death? Of course not. Your victory was quite impressive and courageous. You earned my respect. Yes, I'm convinced the recent invasion of frenzied scowls in London is directly linked to the epidemic. This is not the Spanish flu, but something else. I would be glad to hear more of your discoveries, Dr. Reed. But for now, my main concern is the security of London's inhabitants, both mortal and immortal. What do you mean? Alarmed by the epidemic, the guard of Prewen has started a war against us British vampires. To appease the situation, we must eradicate the Skulls. I have met peaceful and wise Skulls. 
to exterminate them means we are no better than vampire hunters. Scowls are hideous, shameful creatures that give all Ekon a bad name. So, what do you want me to do? I want you to investigate the city thoroughly. I have reason to fear there are cases of contagion in this part of town. Our absolute priority is to find and cleanse them. And how would you like me to proceed? By all means necessary, Dr. Reed. You are now a member of the Ascalon Club, and you have carte blanche. Interrogate the, all the leads you find, and get results. Have you heard the rumors of some horned vampire revealing himself and singing obscure songs around the city? What is this new malevolence? Skulls have been spotted everywhere in London. We are losing this fight. Good evening, Dr. Reed. How does it feel to be this evening's centerpiece? Figuratively. I feel perfectly fine. Do I have cause for concern? Do not be alarmed. The Ascalon Club has a tried and tested policy for choosing its initiates. May I ask who you are, sir? Why would you be interested? Well, as you seem to be the only man in the room with a beating heart, you draw quite a bit of attention yourself. Ah, vampire senses never cease to fascinate me. They dwarf those of mere mortals. I am Aloysius Dawson, by the way. Are you a member of the club? Yes, I am. And I have been for many years. And will be until the day I die. What can you tell me about it? It's not really my place to give you such information. I am merely a mortal member. And a dying one at that. Are you sick? Personally, I consider my advancing years are a sickness in itself. My body is slowly abandoning me, Dr. Reed. Are you not afraid? You are surrounded by vampires. Sir, it's for that very reason that I joined the club in the first place. Is not the nature of this club a secret shared by only a privileged few? My dear Dr. Reed, I have spent years and a fortune precisely to gather that kind of information. So you asked for membership? I have been a member of many clubs in many countries. But I must admit, this one is my favorite. What can you tell me about Lord Redgrave? I would not dare speak of our chairman without his consent. Mr. Dawson? Of Dawson and Dawson? The wealthiest man in England? It is a pleasure to meet such a prominent figure of London. A withering London figurehead, to be precise. Are you sick, Mr. Dawson? I am a doctor, you know. My case is beyond the scope of traditional medicine. I have spent fortunes on the world's most competent doctors to arrive at that diagnostic conclusion. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Should I suppose that you're here in search of some form of immortality? Absolutely not. I'm here to implement my plan to save the city I was born in. To cast out the ghastly evil that has us all on our knees. What do you know about the Guard of Prewood? I should not say this, but I admire their commitment. This is what the nation needs right now. But they are our enemies. They are not mine, Dr. Reed. Would you help them? No. There is a time for such methods, but brute force will not be enough to fight this plague. We have to think differently. What is the situation like in this part of town? I am sure Lord Redgrave will enlighten you more effectively than I. Money cannot solve every problem. This mysterious epidemic is going to require more than money can buy. You're right. Money is nothing unless one has the will to wield it. I have a plan, sir. A radical one that will save all that is essential in London. What is your plan, then? Quarantine and barricades are futile. 
What we need is a wall. A formidable, unscalable wall to isolate the deserving from the infected masses. But that would segregate. Welcome to the Ascalon Club, then, Dr. Reed. I think Lord Redgrave just suggested I was sired by master. an ancient vampire. Women die! Good evening, Miss Ashbury. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Have you noticed anything unusual recently? A few days ago, I spotted a strange house while campaigning for women's suffrage. Awful smell. No answer when I knocked. Where is it? It's the Mullanies. A nice family who live in a big house near the park in the eastern part of this neighborhood. Goodbye, Charlotte. Give my best regards to your mother when you see her. She's been quite busy these last few nights. I suspect you may see her before me. Good evening, Dr. Reed. A great night, what? I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Have you noticed anything unusual? Not really. Wait, now that you mention it, I don't see the McPhersons in my favorite restaurants. They love delicate meals too, you understand? Thank you. It may be nothing, but I'll investigate anyway. Where do they live? They have a house in the southern part of the district, somewhere north of the railway bridge. There is a courtyard, if I remember rightly. Goodbye, Mr. Russell. I'm sure you'll take care of yourself. Have you noticed anything suspicious recently? Good evening, old chap. Are you all right? I won't lie to you, Johnny. I'm not a well man. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Can you help me? Infection is everywhere these days. But if you ever go to the park near that swanky house belonging to the, the Mullanies... Yes? What about the Mullanies? 
What about their house? Not enough noise for a big family with children. Not enough movement. Closed doors. What is going on in there? I wonder. You need some rest, Clarence. You should try to sleep. Yes, Mr. Jonathan? I'm currently investigating sources of the epidemic in this part of town. Do you know anything useful? Not really, except all the McPherson's servants resigned a few days ago. They feared becoming infected, they said. The McPhersons? Where do they live? I think it's a rich house near the railway bridge in the southern part of the district. Goodbye, Avery. Please watch over my mother until I return. Of course, Mr. Jonathan, but please return as soon as possible. Waiting for you to let your guard down. 